few minutes so that you can have time to pray on the topic beyond healing. The text will be 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. First Peter chapter two, verse 24. Who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Immediately you were saved, you have access to divine healing. The day Jesus Christ hung on that cross, shed his blood for you, Cried, it is finished. Your healing was purchased. The Bible says, by his stripes, you were healed. You don't need to beat a man that you want to crucify. They knew they were going to nail him to the cross. They were going to kill him. So why did they still beat him? With 40 stripes. I know a little about what goes on in the prisons. By God's grace, I've been a regular visitor to prisons, not as an inmate, but as a pastor since 1975. And I know that in all the civilized countries in the world, when a man is going to be executed tomorrow, they will ask him today, what kind of food would you like to eat? He will choose his last meal. Occasionally, they may even ask, do you want to watch a film? Because they know he's going. So they, they treat him with some shall we call it last respect. So they knew they were going to crucify Jesus. They knew it. And yet, they beat him. Because he died on the cross, the shedding of the blood on the cross was to buy you salvation with all the benefits that I told you yesterday. 
but the beating is for your healing. By his stripes, ye were healed. I think I've told you before, several years ago, uh, I, I still am sad that I didn't keep that magazine. That the, the one great scientist said, all the sicknesses and diseases in the world could be classified into 39 categories. And so God, the Lord Jesus Christ, took 40 stripes. One stripe for each category of sickness and diseases. And then he took one extra because he knew that the 39 categories were those that were known then. At the time they were classifying those diseases, coronavirus has not yet come. But Jesus knew that there are sicknesses and diseases, the type that the world had never seen before, that are still hiding somewhere. So he took the 49th stripe, 48th stripe, to be ready for them. By his stripes, you were healed. So that you are going to be healed tonight is not the discussion. The discussion is something greater. Something beyond. Oh, the Lord Jesus Christ can heal you by any method he may choose. He can repair, like in Mark chapter 3, from verse 1 to 5, Mark 3, 1 to 5, saw a man with a withered hand and repaired the withered hand. He can replace any part of the body that is not functioning well, like in Mark chapter 8, from verse 22 to 25, Mark 8, 22 to 25, found a blind man, touched the blind man, as the blind man, can you see, he said, oh, I see men like trees. I'm okay, but not 100%. So he gave him a second touch. Please, engineers, some people are clapping far away. And you know what that means. Or oh, Jesus can completely recreate, give you a brand new part. John chapter 9. From verse 1 to 7, John 9, 1 to 7, found a man born blind, spit on the ground, made some mud, put it there, told him to go and wash. He went, he washed, and came back seeing. But there's something beyond healing. Something called wholeness. Because it is possible for you to go to the hospital, 
with a headache. And then they give you something and the headache disappears. But the doctor might not know that apart from the headache, you also have stomach disorder. But when you are made whole, everything, every form of sickness disappears. And in the name that's above every other name, somebody's going home tonight whole. At times, you get healed. But there are some little, little left behinds. And when God decides to make you whole, He sees to it that there be no leftovers. In 2 Kings chapter 5, from verse 1 to 14, 2 Kings 5, 1 to 14, when God healed the man, He gave him skin like of a brand new baby. Total healing, no scars left behind. It is called wholeness. God is going to heal somebody tonight. There will be no sign that you have ever been sick. wholeness. There is living a life with an assurance that you will never be sick again. In Exodus 15 verse 26, Exodus 15 verse 26, God made a promise. That if we obey him, obey all his commandments. He said he will make sure that no sickness will come near you at all. He says he will become your personal physician. Years ago, when I was sharing this with some of my children, one of them asked, If I can never be sick again, how am I going to die and go to heaven? You don't have to be sick to go to heaven. There are some of us here, like I've always told you, when it's time to go, we we'll go to church on Sunday, Dance, rejoice, come home, eat pandediam, and go. No sickness at all. That's what I require for you. But then there's still something beyond that. And that is the ability to carry the healing virtue in yourself. That anybody who touches you or you touch will receive an overflow of healing of hell from you to them.
I'm believing God that tonight someone be, will begin to lay hands on the sick and they recover. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, from verse 1 to 8, Acts 3, 1 to 8, Apostle Peter touched a man, born lame. And the power of God flowed through him into that man, and the Bible says his ankle bones received strength, received strength. Strength was poured into that man and the strength went to where the trouble was and solved the problem. So the fellow got up walking, jumping, praising God. I thank God for one of the testimonies we had tonight of a child that Couldn't walk, couldn't talk, couldn't do anything. And then God moved in. And the boy is now jumping, is now singing, is now dancing, is now doing everything. Oh, everything you have not been able to do before, you'll be doing it tonight. No, I'm not talking to everybody. I, 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 I'm talking to those people who know that the message is for them. And they are the people who say amen, not, not her. But there's something beyond that. The Almighty God can so load you with anointing that your sweat will be healing the sick. In Acts chapter 19 from verse 11 to 12, Acts 19 from verse 11 to 12, the Bible spoke of uh, the anchor chiefs and aprons, anything that has touched the body of uh, All healing the sick. Years ago, and you've had this testimony before, some young brothers went to the uh, riverine area to go and evangelize. So they were staying in a classroom and because they were in the river area, there were many mosquitoes. So as they were sleeping, uh, mosquitoes were paying them cause call. And so everybody was slapping, trying to get rid of mosquitoes. And there was this boy who was just cool. And the other said, ah, brother, the mosquitoes are not troubling you. He said, they, are, he said they, they are not. What are you talking about? And he stretched out his hand, bare hand. And the mosquitoes came quickly bombarded the hand. But as people watched, the mosquitoes fell down dead, one by one. That anointing that will kill any virus that comes near you instantly, Receive it tonight in Jesus' name. Many 
let us see something beyond that. The Almighty God can so anoint you that your shadow, your shadow, not you, not your ankachi, your shadow will be healing the sick. Is there in Acts chapter 5 from verse 14 to 16? Acts 5 from 14 to 16. It tells us of a time when the shadow of Peter was healing the sick. And, and I've, I've shared the testimony with you before. The older ones were there when we were in the very, very first auditorium having a convention like this. And God spoke to me and said that there were some people who had severe back pains so bad that for a long time they were not able to bend down to touch their toes. He asked me to call them forward that he wanted to heal them. And I was glad. I called them forward. Some of you were there. And I was expecting that God would say lay hands on them or slap their back. No, he said I should dance around them because I know his voice I did what he asked me to do it looks stupid why would I be dancing around the people I'm dancing because your back is aching but after some five minutes of dancing he asked me to tell them, every one of you, go ahead, touch your toes. And they were all healed. I'm not going to dance around you tonight. <laughs> you are too many to dance around. But in the name that's above every other name, even as I wave my hand, receive your healing. Now that's part one. Let's go to part two. Let us apply what we've just learned. Because we are serving a God who is more than sufficient. Let us apply the theory we've just learned. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. Matthew 18, verse 18. It says, Whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be loose in heaven. In plain man language, that is saying, whatever you allow on earth will be allowed in heaven. Whatever you disallow on earth will be disallowed in heaven. So the time is coming when you are going to pray and you will disallow certain things. And I will give you an illustration. About 40 years ago, I suddenly discovered I was losing my hearing. Some of you have had the testimony before. And one of my daughters, a medical doctor, came. I, I called her. 
please look into my ears what's, what's going on. And she pointed some a kind of light and said, Oh God. <laughs> and if your doctor says, Oh God, you know that's trouble. Daddy, there's a growth in your ear. And it looks very terrible. We have to do something about it very, very soon. It's in a delicate place, but we have to operate. I smile. She said that it is not a joking matter. I said, ah, easy, my dear. Give me seven days. On the seventh day, come back. If the growth is still there, eh, then you can do what you need to do. Because I refuse. I disallow growth in my ear. Those of you who have heard the story before, you know the result. She came back seven days later, pointed her light again, I said, oh God, what is the oh God now? The growth has disappeared. How many of you will refuse sickness, disease, anything that is ugly in your, how many of you will refuse? Say amen loud and clear. Point number two, under application. God said in Mark chapter 16, read it from verse 17 to 18, Mark 16, 17 to 18. Thank you, Father. Some growths are already disappearing. Mark 16, from verse 17 to 18. The Lord says, In my name, you will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. And see, I've told you this one before. When he says, you will lay hands on the sick, number one, he didn't say you are the one who will make them recover? Your own is to lay hands. Number two. He didn't say you lay hands on so and so and so. He just said you lay hands on the sick. Which means if the sick is yourself, and you lay hands on yourself, what's going to happen to you? You recover. And I told you the first time I traveled to Zambia, 1993, I think, and I ate something that I wasn't accustomed to. And then, through the night, I began to stew. I can't remember how many times, but it was around 23rd or 24th time when, that I went to the toilet that I suddenly realized God said you lay hands on the sick. I am the one sick now. I lay hand on my head. Adeboye, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command, be healed. And the stooling stopped. So somewhere along the line tonight, 
you're going to lay hands on yourself. And you're going to command healing to your body. And someone shall be healed. Who is that someone? If you are the one, shout a big hallelujah. Application number three. In Psalm 107, verse 20. Psalm 107, verse 20. The Bible says, He sent His word and healed them. He sent His word. The body heard the word. And the body was healed. So somewhere along the line tonight, you're going to speak to your body. You're going to tell your body, body, hear the word of the Lord. And your body must obey God, you know. And so your body will be saying, waiting to hear. What is the word of the Lord that you are asking me to hear? And so you will tell your body that it is written, Matthew chapter 15, verse 13, Matthew 15, verse 13. Every plant that my father has not planted shall be rooted up. You're going to be speaking to your body, your own body. Body, hear the word of the Lord. Everything in you that was not put there by my God must come out tonight. And then somewhere along the line, tonight, we are going to apply Matthew chapter 18, verse 19. Matthew 18, verse 19. What does it say? The Lord Jesus Christ promised that if two of you shall agree as touching anything you ask on earth, it shall be done for you by our Father in heaven. So somewhere along the line, and we will soon get there, you're going to get a partner. You're going to hold that partner and tell the Almighty God, I agree with my brother. I agree with my sister for complete healing tonight. (laughs) And then like I used to say, then we shall see what we shall see. However, however, because like I told you yesterday, nothing goes for nothing. Because some of you will say, I I have laid hands before and there was nothing. I have uh, spoken to my body before. He didn't respond, etc., etc. What's the secret? What's the fine print? What, what must we know before we begin to 
pray. The one who will be healed must be prepared to testify. Thank God for the choir. They were brilliant again tonight, as usual. And one of the songs they render said, I will testify. When they were saying that, I know they were talking about me. How many people will testify tonight? Because when you look at Mark chapter 1, verse 40 to 45, Mark 1, 40 to 45, the Bible tells us that Jesus killed an incurable fellow. He was a leper. And the Lord told him, okay, I've healed you now. Go home, keep your mouth shut. He said, ha. <laughs> keep, my, keep my mouth shut. He told everybody. The Bible said the next time Jesus came to town, because of the testimony of one man, Jesus could no longer walk freely. Because he kept on telling them, he healed me, I was a leper, he made me whole, he made me whole, he made me whole. There are many of us here who have been healed before. We didn't testify. That's why we lost the healing. There are some of us, God would have healed you, but he knows you. He knows you won't talk. There are some of us who have been born again. Only God knows for how many years. Even in our place of work, they don't know. Because we won't testify. The one who is going to move from healing to wholeness must be someone who will come back to say thank you to God. In Luke chapter 17, from verse 11 to 19, Luke 17, 11 to 19, Jesus cleansed ten lepers. Only one came back to say, thank you. It is to that one that Jesus Christ said, all right, move from healing to wholeness. The one whose touch we begin to make the lame walk. Like in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 1 to 8, that we mentioned, Peter. We be the one who will stand out as a testifier. Because on the day of Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, you can read it from verse 1 to 41. Acts 2, 1 to 41. When the Holy Spirit came and every apostle, every disciple, I mean, they were speaking in tongues. And, and tongues is very important. I don't know, maybe God will allow us to even do something about that during the convention. But when everybody was enjoying tongues, Peter stood up and preached. He stood out. One of my pastors has a nickname given him by his peers. You know the name they call him? Mr. Testimony. 
Because any time we had a meeting, any time, Daddy, I have a testimony. Daddy, I have any time. So finally, his colleagues began to call him Mr. Testimony. What a good name. The one whose sweat, whose handkerchiefs and aprons will begin to heal the sick. As Apostle Paul is the one who said in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 15, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 15, he said, I will gladly spend and be spent for God. I thank God that God has used me in the area of uh, waving my hand and uh, and catches become anointed and, and you return with testimonies. But I'm telling you When there is work to be done for God, as much as is possible, I won't allow you to do my own. Some years ago, we were building a little church in Elisha, and everybody was carrying headpan and so on. And I was carrying my own. Don't worry, those of you cannot hear me. God has already healed you anyway. And I was a lecturer in the University of Lagos. And somebody came and saw me. Ah, okay. How can you be carrying headpan? Let me uh, uh, go and get your own headpan. I might be an important man as a lecturer. I am nothing without God. But with Him, I am everything. The Bible says I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The one who sweat will heal. Must be willing to spend and be spent for God. The one whose shadow is going to heal. Like in the case of Peter that we mentioned. If we go back to Luke chapter 5 from verse 1 to 11. Luke 5 from verse 1 to 11. The day Jesus stepped into his, heart, into his boat, that was the day Peter said, I will follow you anywhere. There are certain things that God will only give to those who are 100% committed to him. There were many sons of the prophets. Only Elisha got a double portion because he followed his master all the way. Finally, the one who is going to get beyond healing must be somebody with the faith of a child. In mathematics, we have what we call set of numbers. Don't worry, I'm, 
I'm, <laughs> I'm not about to teach you uh, PhD mathematics stuff. But whenever it's, a number can be divided by two, what do we call that number? Even numbers, ah, thank you, at least you know that's, that's simple. And whenever a number cannot be divided by two, what do we call it? Odd number, yeah. That's all, you, you know the mathematics you need to know. <laughs> In the spiritual realm, we have a set called the set of the Almighty. The first person in that set is God. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. The second fellow in that set, according to Mark chapter 9, verse 23, Mark 9, 23, is the one who believes. If only you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. If only you can believe. Childlike faith. It's required if you are to belong to the set of the Almighty, the one who can say, My body, command you. Hear the word of the Lord. Childlike faith. One who would lay his hand on his head, say, Adeboye, command you. Be healed. Childlike faith. Faith like a baby. You're going to need that tonight. And then in conclusion. Many times I have prayed for someone. With all the faith I can muster, I fasted, done vigils. And I don't get the results I want. And many a times I run to my father. Ah, uh -uh, daddy. If I don't know anything at all, I know you love me. I know that. I know there's nothing you cannot do. I know that. You have proved that to me again and again and again. What is going on? And many a times God will say to me, son, you don't know all the story. The one you are praying for has not told you all the story. And I'll give you an illustration. Don't worry, I'm about to close. I'm going through all these details because, ha. Huh, this convention, you are not going to forget it for life. <laughs> there was this woman who was sick. And we prayed all manners of prayers, and I mean all manners of prayers. Intercession, supplication, uh, all manners. She didn't get away. 
When I complain, God says, ask her now. Tell her to tell you the whole story. Woman, tell me the whole story, please. And she said, well, I happen to be the second wife of my husband. And uh, the first wife had given him some boys before uh, she left, or oh, I think she died. Then I came in and I saw that uh, with the boys I had, whatever children I have, they're not going to be prominent. So I killed the boys. of Jesus cleanses from all sins. The only thing that I believe you need to do now is uh, let's settle this matter with your husband so you restitute. <laughs> she said, stop praying for my healing because I can manage the sickness. Because the day I tell that man that this is what happened, that day I die. God is here tonight. It's about to heal. Don't hide anything that can stand between you and your miracle. Finally, in Mark chapter 2 from verse 1 to 12, <clears throat> Mark 2, 1 to 12, they brought a man through the roof to where Jesus Christ was ministering. Man was paralyzed from neck down. Four people brought him in. And Jesus saw them bringing in this boy. He saw the kind of faith that can break the roof open. And you would think that, I mean, there's no need to ask any question. Everybody can see that. This man needs a miracle. And when Jesus turned to him, what did he say? Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. I thought he would just say, Son, be healed. No. He said, we have to get sin out of the way for the power of the Almighty God to be able to do His work. So if you are here tonight, whether in this auditorium or in the new auditorium or wherever, and you don't want the extraordinary move of God, the, the, the healing power of God that's already flowing like a river. You don't want it to be useless in your life. And you know you are still living in sin. You need to come forward and let Jesus Christ take care of the sin. Because unless he saves your soul, 
unless his blood washes away your sin. Unless the dog that has returned to his vomit wants to come back to God to be called a son again. Unless backsliders want to return. <sighs> when you begin to hear the testimonies of tonight, you will say, and I was there. So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I'm going to count from 1 to 15, and you must be standing before the altar before I come to 15, so we can pray together and ask the Almighty God to be merciful unto you, to save your soul, wash away your sins, so that the healing power of God can reach out to you tonight. I'm counting now one pure glory and honor for your word. And I want to thank you for these people that have come forward to surrender their life to you today. Father, please have mercy on them. Save their souls. Let your blood wash away their sins. Write their names in the book of life. Let them become children of God. And any time they cry unto you for anything, answer them by fire. And when you begin to heal tonight, Father, include them among the people. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You can begin to thank God in advance. Because tonight, God is about to heal somebody. And I believe that somebody needs to begin to thank God now in advance. Thank you. Like I said, we have three major prayer points. And one of the prayer points, you'll be laying hands on your own head and commanding the mighty name of Jesus that you'll be healed. And another, you'll be speaking to your body, telling the body to hear the word of the Lord. That every plant that God has not planted in that body be uprooted. And then in another, we'll be praying the prayer of agreement. But we are going to start with the prayer of agreement. We're going to find a partner. If your husband and your wife is here, automatically your partner will be your wife. If you are not a couple here, then the fellow who is next to you is a fellow you join hands with and pray. So I'm going to ask you to please stand. And if you believe God is going to answer you tonight, let me hear you shout hallelujah. <clears throat> so I'm going to join my hands with my wife. You find your own partner, join hands with the partner, and lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, I agree with this fellow I'm holding. Give him or her total wholeness tonight. Go ahead, talk to the Lord. Now lay your own hand on your own head. And lift your voice to the Almighty God and say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Adeboye be healed. Go 
ahead, just mention your name, call on the Almighty God. Behold, Adeboi. Behold completely from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. Behold, behold, hundred percent. Up. Now you see, keep the hand on your head and command your body. Say, body, I command you in the name of Jesus. Hear the word of the Lord. Everything in you that is not of God, get out now. Open your mouth and command your body. <laughs> 